Hello again, this is Hans-Jürgen Clemens speaking from company Motic. Today I'd like to talk to you about how to mount the fluorescence onto our BA410 elite microscope. This I'd like to do in three steps. Step number one, we have to mount a T-shaped attachment including the lamp house on the microscope stand. For this we have to remove the eyepiece tube first. In the second step I'd like to mount the filter cubes onto the dovetail and the final step, step number three, will be how to do the, the final tuning, the final alignment of the illumination. So let's go to step number one. Please first remove the eyepiece tube. For this, loosen the screw on the right side of the microscope body. And please take away the cover which hides the thread of the fixing screws later on. As you can see, the fluorescence attachment has been fixed and at the end the eyepiece tube has been mounted again on top. This construction is already quite solid, but if you want to be 100% sure, you may take these fixing screws and mount them firmly. At the end, you may cover the holes with those tiny little rubber pieces. The final procedure in step number one of our whole setup will be the mounting of the lamp house, of the pre-aligned lamp house. So I'm going to take the Allen key and this lamp house and fix it firmly at the end of the attachment. There is only one possibility to fix it in the correct way. There's a notch and an orientation pin. In step number two, we have to do the mounting of the filter cubes. Please note that the fluorescence attachment has got four positions. One, two, three, four. All filter cubes have to be mounted on a dovetail. This way. I recommend to mount two cubes from the right side and two cubes from the left side. Please note that the four position slider has to be filled completely with cubes. In our case, we do have two real cubes, a Darby and a Tritz one, and two empty cubes, which are part of the fluorescence package. It's up to you now to decide which orientation is the correct one, because we do have two options to mount the cube like this or the other way around. If it's like this, it follows exactly the ray path of the fluorescence as it goes from the light source to the dichroic, downwards through the objective and back through the objective to the eyepieces. So this has to be the orientation of the dichroic, which means that this will be the correct mounting position. In case the orientation of the first filter cube is correct, please memorize the orientation of the dichroic mirror. Then it's very easy to mount the three other ones because they all follow the tongue and groove principle. Tongue, groove, groove, and again. So this will be the sequence. The four cubes will be mounted into the dovetail. Please note that I push the lever to the left side. The right slider position will be activated. So it's up to you to decide the sequence of the filter cube mounting. I personally prefer to start with a lower wavelength. In this case, it will be the Dappy cube who will be on pole position, position number one. And I will place the Tritz cube on position number two. One more recommendation. I personally prefer to mount two cubes from the left side and two cubes from the right side. Now I'm going to start the mounting of the single filter cubes. I'm going to lose this one. The plate now falls down. And I'm going to start with cube number two. Remember that the Darby will be later on pushed on the slider. The Tritz cube has been mounted. Now it's time for the Darby cube. And, of course, we have to fix it.
done. The same procedure will be done on the left side of the microscope. This is the first empty cube I'm going to push on the slider to the end, and the last one. And again, fix it. Finally, I'm going to close the opening. Now all the mounting has been done now. The fluorescence attachment, the pre-aligned lamp house, and the four filter cubes. Two of them real filter combinations, two of them empty cubes to fill the slider. Now it's time to make a general setup of the bright field illumination. So switch on the microscope, place a sample on top of the stage, and do all the procedures for a correct curler setup. Field diaphragm, condenser height, and at the end, a perch diaphragm. Once this is done, you may switch off the microscope again. So now it's time for the final adjustment of the fluorescence illumination. So take away the slide, which has been useful to set up the curler illumination for transmitted light, and instead place a business card on the stage. Rotate the revolving nose piece onto the point where you have an empty position and switch on the external power supply. Now you have to wait a few seconds until the image of the light arc is getting sharper and sharper. And as you can see now, you have a double image, the direct light and the light that is reflected by the internal mirror of the lamp house. We have to focus by moving the collector lens and we have to do an XY movement to get the direct light and the mirror light close to each other or even superposing a little bit. Once this is done, you may defocus by moving the collector lens until you get a homogeneously illuminated bright spot on the business card. For a final control of this setting, you may remove the business card, swing in the 10 times lens and place a fluorescent slide onto the stage. You may check through the eyepieces and do a little bit of fine tuning. In order to avoid reflections, swing out the front lens of the condenser or even drive down a complete condenser. Some final things have to be done now. First of all, centering of the field diaphragm of the fluorescence attachment. So check your image and close the field diaphragm. And center the field diaphragm, just as, as in the curler procedure, until the spot has moved to the middle. And then, again, open the field diaphragm for the com complete field of view. You may use these tags to mark each, each position of the slider. And finally, you may use the filter slider with a neutral density filter to push into the slot of the lamp house. But this is no longer necessary as you can adjust the intensity of illumination with a new power supply. There is only one message be behind all these centering procedures we did before, and this message is very clear. Please care and do everything that you get the maximum excitation energy onto your sample, because only this ensures a bright signal and a satisfying image quality. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it gave you some helpful information. More information you can find on our website www.moticeurope.com and of course you find us on YouTube channel. You're invited to visit us on our social media platforms. Thanks again for your attention. Mm -hmm.